Today we're going to talk about finding the propubus problem. So we see that we have an interrupter on our screen, and all these encoders are red. What's happened here is that we have a break somewhere in the circuit. The way the circuit works is that every encoder starts with the feed, and it goes all the way through this circuit, all the way through here, and ends with this last one right here. If there's a break anywhere in that circuit, what we see is everything on that screen is red. So the easiest way to determine where your break is at is we're going to do what's called half step. We're going to take it, we're going to split the machine in half, and we're going to see is our problem down here on the stationary end, or is it down here on the carriage end. What we've done to make that a little bit easier for you is that we, we have put what's called the terminator at the very end of the circuit. That's this little guy right here. So if we unscrew that and pull that out, we can move this around and we can take it down to the other end of the saw and plug it in to where it goes to the opposite from where it starts feeding the other side. So the only thing we see is all the encoders on this side. So let's do that. So what you'll see is that we've got a long purple wire that's, that's all coiled up. This is what's feeding the other side of the saw. So we're going to unscrew this connector. We're going to use this terminator that I talked about, and we're going to put it into here. Simply by turning it real slowly, it'll fall right into place. If you're forcing it, you're probably doing something wrong, and you're going to damage the pins on the end, on the, the cord itself. So let's go take a look at that screen again. So now we see everything on this side of the screen is green. So well, that tells us that our problem is not on the stationary end any longer. Okay. So we're going to start working our way down on this side of the machine, the traveling end, and see where our problem has occurred. Our next step is going to be, we're going to find the cable to come in through this track right here, and we're going to disconnect it. What we're doing here is we're making sure that this cord that goes from one end of the machine to the other end of the machine has not been damaged. As you see my connector, to the cable that's coming from the other end of the machine. If I look at my touch screen over here, I still have everything green on the stationary end of the saw. So that tells me that my cable is working. So now I can start figuring out where's my problem at on this, on this side of the saw. So now that I know that this cable here is not the damage, I'm going to reconnect it. The next thing I want to do is I want to add a couple more of these encoders into the circuit and see if I can get some more of them to turn green for it. I will add in my angle, my center line 5, and also my hold down input. So now if we look at the screen, We'll see that those four encoders are working. So we're down to five encoders that we have to figure out where is our problem. But connecting two wires back together. I'm going to add in these last two encoders and see if maybe it was just a loose connection. Now we see that we've got two encoders that are red. And everything's good in this circuit. Remember, it runs from one to the next to the next to the next all the way through. And right now what we've done is we've plugged it off all the way to center line three. So there's no flow going to number to angle three or the carriage, okay? So we're gonna move the plug and we're gonna put it back down here on the carriage and see if everything starts working again. If it doesn't, then we know that our problem is either a problem with the carriage encoder or it's a problem with the angle encoder. So as we see, we were we had two encoders that were left, and only one of the two is probably bad. In 
this case, it looks like it's my keratin coder that's the one that's small. What I actually found is a cable that the pins have gotten twisted on it. This happens when you don't seat it properly and you force it together. So if it doesn't fall right into place, this is what happens is that these pins get twisted and you get a bad connection. So after replacing the cable, now everything's back to being green. Let's talk about some encoder sh troubleshooting. So on our encoder circuit here, when we watched the video, what we seen was that we only had one green encoder that was showing on the screen and everything else was red. And this is common anytime that we get a break anywhere in the circuit, it's going to make it look like all the encoders are having a problem. And what it is, it's just a break in the circuit and we have to determine how can we find that break in the circuit. So at the end of the circuit on the carriage, we have what's called a terminator. And that's this little plug that I'm showing you that's screwed in at the very, very last cable. So what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew that cable and take it out from the carriage and we're going to walk it down to the stationary end of the saw. And right by where the air plugs into the saw, there's a, there's a purple cable that's coiled up and it connects to one of the encoders, the very last one on the stationary end side of the, the stationary end of the saw. So we're going to unscrew that. When we plug it in, as we see in the picture here, this black mark that's there, that's that terminator I just showed you. So now we see all these purple lines right here. We've made a good connection, and everything flows through, and we're not having any kind of a break at that side of the machine. So that tells me that there's no problem going on with any of the encoders on the stationary end of the machine. The next thing I want to do, though, is I want to make sure that that cable that travels from end to end on the machine has not been damaged. It is so. It is subsequent to damage because it's traveling back and th forth through a, a flexible track. So we just want to make sure that it's working correctly. And what we'll do is we're going to move that terminator down to the other side of the saw before it connects to any of the other encoders. All that looks good. So again, what we're doing is what I call half stepping. We're just going to keep adding half the circuit back in. So our next step is you'll notice that we're going to move that terminator over one more time. Now we've added in four more encoders, and those are all great. So now we know all these encoders so far are not the problem. We still have, uh, looks like, five more encoders to go to narrow it down to where the problem is. We're doing pretty good, man. We're down to two encoders now after I moved the terminator. So our problem at this point in time is one of these two encoders. As you've seen in the video, what I found was one of the cables had pins that had gotten damaged. And that was the cable that was going from angle three, and that was causing it that it wouldn't let anything else work when we had that terminator at the very end. When we have it all fixed, it looks like this. The flow is consistent all the way through, and our terminator is back at the end where we started at. Now we're ready to get back into production.